Ian Roberts, one of the toughest players from the NRL. He's played for three NRL clubs and has represented both New South Wales and Australia. In 1995, in his final season with the Manly Sea Eagles, Ian made it public that he was gay. He's been an icon for the rainbow community ever since. He's the director of Qtopia Sydney and is a patron of pride in sport. Ian is also an actor featuring in films and TV series, including Mr. In Between and Superman Returns. He's also been a runner up in Dancing with the Stars. It's been a big week for rugby league. Your, just your reflections on the week that was. Hiku, I would say it's only been a positive, mate. I think it's, it, it's been a, a much needed um, conversation um, a, a around this space, a, a, a around the uh, the idea of having uh, pride inclusion rounds. And, and I think now people really understand the um, the meaning and, and the benefit of, of what a pride round actually represents. I think we can all agree it doesn't matter who you love, but it, it matters that you're loved. And that's basically the fundamental of what a pride round is. So that pride jersey, what kind of impact would it have had on you, a young Ian Roberts, when you were playing footy back in the 80s and the 90s? I mean, I get a little emotional even hearing you say that, but I, um, you know what, I hadn't given it that perspective. I've known since I was a, uh, since I was a young man, before my teens, that, that, that I was same-sex attracted. I didn't know what that meant at that time, but I did know it was I was different, and, and I did know that it was not the way to be, that it wasn't accepted. Um, you know, I, I never felt safe enough uh, growing up through my teens. I lived a, quite a, a closeted life, um, you know, in my mid-20s, that I felt safe enough to come out. It was such a different era back then. It was such a different... Uh, understanding of of what it was to be to be you know, LGBTIQA plus uh, you know back then um, such a misunderstanding and, and um, oh, I can only imagine it would have been the most, was incredibly empowering I mean, you know as it, it empowers young people it makes people you know, um, those not just young people anyone dealing with any sort of like sexual identity or um, sexuality issues it, it makes them feel like they are welcome that that they are wanted and, and that they are worthy you know. Yeah. Mm. and included you know we are all part of the same community mate but i can only imagine wow having a pride round back in the 80s my god i, don't... <laughs> I can only imagine the controversy that that i like and, and, and i can only imagine it, um that what reaction that would have provoked it would have been you know I, i've got to be honest i thinking back because that was quite a violent time you know you're now talking at a time in the late 80s when there was a whole load of gay murders, of gay men being thrown off cliffs and that around the um, around the eastern suburbs, and it was a real, it was a really dangerous time. You know, you're, we're now talking, yeah, um, yeah it's such a different era. I like, I hadn't given it that perspective. Like no. you're just giving me that question, I hadn't thought about it like that. Wow. There's actually news out there that there is a manly player that is gay that has been devastated by the news that no longer feels comfortable about his being open about his sexuality. How tough is that? You know, me being gay was like the worst kept secret in rugby league for, for such a long time. And I, but, but I will say, I before I came out, I had this reluctance to come out because I didn't because I was leading a gay life anyway. I mean, I, you know, some of the stories, the, the mascot who used to be uh, at, at at Manly, the big sea eagle guy running around in the suit, that was my boyfriend, and everyone knew that. That was before I came out. Like, it, I didn't feel like I needed. I felt like. It was almost like this political decision. Why do I have to come out mm. to be accepted? It was almost like, but I, 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 looking back now, that was also a bit of stubbornness and just seeing, I, I was just kind of de what, de demanding equal, equal rights without having to declare anything, basically. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I understand the importance of visibility now and how that affects other people and how, you know, if you can't see it, you can't be it and how that affects young people. They, they need to see their, they need to see themselves up there. They need representation. I do think um, with the overwhelmingly positive response that the, that the Pride Rounds had now, you know, that, that player at Manly, if there is that player at Manly, I would feel he, he would feel a bit empowered. But he's still, you know, he's, you know, he's going to have to have that conversation with, with those players who, who uh, sat the game out. You know, and I, and I think on reflection, I think even those players, it's been a bit enlightening for them too, you know, mm -hmm. educational uh, um, that most people get now. You know, like... You know, it's you know, it's okay to love someone. Yeah, I I was watching the news and you said you wanted to sit down with those seven players and have a cordial. 
and I totally respect um, th those th those men and, and their choices. You know, um, I, I think like I look back and I. I, I, I've often thought, what, what does the LGBTIQA plus community need to do t to be respected? Because a lot of times they're just disrespected because, you know, I get disrespected just because I'm gay. For no fault of my own, people think that's enough, that that's enough to be di di disrespectful to me. Mm -hmm. um, I, I often wonder, what is it we have to do to, <laughs> like, just to bridge that gap? Just to, and, you know, like, and I've, I've kind of found it's like in all in my conversations, I've always had to be concessional. I've always had to make compromises. I've always I've always had to take the backwards seat and listen. I, I um, you know, I, uh, but but I mean, I'm, that's okay. I would love to be able to sit down and talk to those guys, to talk to those guys if they wanted to. I'm not I'm not saying they want to talk to me, and I, I'd understand if they didn't. I but you know, um, I don't have any sort of qualifications or any sort of professional uh, um, uh, certificates in, in this field. You know, I'm not an expert. I've just been placed in this situation because of my own personal situation coming out, and to give a voice. You know, I do feel like I need. To give a voice to all the to, to the voiceless out there, all those young kids at home who are dealing with their sexuality and issues, you know, like sometimes they don't have a voice, they don't have someone to speak up to them. They need to see that visibility. That they need to see people in their community who are who are. It's not about being brave. Who are in ownership in themselves, saying, "Yeah, I'm gay," and it's you know, I love. Can I say this? Because I, I, I think I want to say this. Oh, you know, I didn't even think of. I love the. I love being gay. I mean, I'm so glad, I'm so grateful I was born gay because it's it's totally enlightened, not just me, but my family. I grew up in an incredibly homophobic family, incredibly homophobic, but that, but they've all changed. They've all now seen that, that it's okay to love and, and this is not a choice and it's, and it's made them, it's made them richer and made, and made their lives and, and given them more insight in, in, into what it is to care for other people and, and and, and how powerful that is, you know. I, I just want to say that I love the fact that I'm gay. I'm so glad I was born gay. Mm. I want, I, and that's what I would love other pe like other people, and the kids and, and people dealing with this to, to feel that power and that strength of, of just, yeah. I mean, I I love my partner. I mean, I I can't tell you that this he's the best thing that ever happened to me in my life. Yeah. So I, I, that, that's that's what I would love to say to those guys. You know, like. Love is love. I mean, it, it sounds like a tacky thing to say, but it's so true, mate. Is it lonely? Is it a tiring journey for you being the only open gay man and you're like the go-to person when these kind of issues arise? I will say that um, it, it does sometimes uh, feel like a heavy load, mate. I yeah. I, I can say on, on Thursday morning, um, I did have a bit of a meltdown. I was supposed to do some other publicity. It was just too much, mate. I was just like... <laughs> I got to the point my partner had to cancel those meetings because I was just like, I can't keep up the happy face all the time because yeah. you know, like it, 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 I can't keep up. And that's what I mean about having to compromise. I always feel like I need to be the happy face or need to be the positive. And sometimes it's just like it was devastating to get that news, mate, for, for me. that. Um, and I'm not attacking those seven players. I'm not. It's not about that. But it was kind of devastating. And it was just like because I do know it potentially catastrophic consequences for some kids out there in the suburbs you know mm -hmm. you know they, they, the lgbtqa plus um community are 11 times you know i don't want to start quoting all these horrible statistics but 11 times more likely to take their life yeah you know it's yeah, that, that type of thing and, the, and and these are these are the consequences of, of potential consequences of boycotts and that, of, of, of pride rounds and things like people don't realize that there are kids at home feeling like they are less or kids at home feeling like they are somehow alien and that they are worthless and be, because they're gay are we naive to think that there's never been a gay or black or another uh gay man that's played in the nrl i mean it's crazy i mean obviously that's you know that's yeah that's beyond belief. that that's actually beyond belief you know it's like but you know, the thing is we obviously don't have a safe space, so yeah. exactly, well, that's exactly right, mate. You know, if someone doesn't feel safe enough to come out, then we need there's still work to be done, you know. Like, we still need, you know, and that's not only about the positive about the uh, the past week's event. This has been a pop because it's a conversation that had to be had. A lot of people think 
particularly here in Australia, since we had the, the marriage equality vote like four years ago, that, that that fight now is now over and that's been dealt with, you know, equals equal. It's not. There's still an incredible amount of homophobia, transphobia happens daily. Like, there's an incredible amount of that. And it's, you know, we have to have this conversation. That's why I really think it's been a kind of a healthy thing. I'm really glad that Manly stuck to their guns also and in that they allowed those seven players to stand down, but they didn't change their jumper. That You know, that, that Manly, by doing that, Manly, you know, uh, they were basically saying there are some things in you know in some things in rugby league that are more imp- more important than two points. You know, it, 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 we are now talking about the quality and the world being of of of, of our, our supporters and, and our playing group. This is more important than that, and that's why I was so glad that they stuck to the guns and played in that jumper. It was incredibly incredibly powerful. And I just want to thank Desi, all the players, all the administration there, all all, all the all the staff that worked there, uh, and all the supporters for. Um, uh, f- f- for doing that.